We're really getting into it now. We've talked about a lot of stuff. Today we're going to be talking about material functions. What is a material function? Well, if you're used to programming, you know what a function is. It is a little bit of code that is easily reusable elsewhere in your code. And a material function is pretty much that for your material graphs. So if we go into, for instance, our flat color material here, and I uh, add in, I think, a height loop, which we'll talk about in the future as well, uh, you see that this is a different kind of node. It's like this blue type of node. That's because a height loop is a pre-existing material function. You can actually double click on it and it opens up the material function so you can see how this height loop works under the hood. Of course, we don't really care about a height loop at the moment, but that's just to demonstrate what those nodes are. If you ever see one of those types of nodes and you're wondering, hey, what's actually going on here? Uh, you can double click on it, open it up, and there's a good chance that you'll be very confused because most of the pre-existing material functions in Unreal Engine tend to get quite complex quite quickly. But we can make our own as well. So if we go into our materials here, we can make a material function. And let's just say that this is uh, like texture, colored scale. That's something that we do quite a lot, right? It's just scaling up and down our um, texture coordinates. So if we open this up, we get a output node, which is whatever we're going to end up outputting. And that will, in this case, be a vector two. So we'll get our uh, texture coordinates, and that will be a vector two that we will multiply. Uh, actually, let's um, break the texture um, coordinates first, and then multiply them by two different amounts. So we get an X and a Y uh, thing. So we can scale them in different ways, and then we can append them back together. Uh, to make it back into a vector 2. And that will then be our output in this case. And now it's just multiplying these by 1 at all times. So instead of just adding a normal uh, parameter here, like you'd be used to in a, a normal material, what we want to do is actually we want to add a function input, which by default will try to add a vector 3 input. But if we go over to the input type over here, we can see we have a input type that we can put uh, to anything that we want uh, aside from that. So if we set that to just a scalar uh, parameter instead, or in this case, actually, let's just make it a vector 2, because that makes the most sense. We're working with a vector 2, might as well make this a vector 2. There we can uh, break this one as well. And then the R will multiply with the R, and the B will multiply with the B. We can even give this a default value, like a preview value. And uh, we will just ignore the Z and the W uh, slots here. It still displays them, even though this is a function uh, input for a vector 2. It's only going to take in the first two uh, parameters that we have. So we'll set those to 1 by default. And now we have our little material function here. And selecting the output here, you can give this some kind of name. Uh, I called this one scaled UVs because that's what the output is called. Uh, we can also give the inputs a name. I'm pretty sure your yeah, input name will just be uh, scale vector 2. In this UV math material that we made sometime in the past to show you UV math, we made this like texture coordinate divided by 10. And that's then going into the texture sample uh, to set the scale of this texture, right? But now that we have our material function, we can disconnect this like it was just a moment ago. So instead, now we can drag our texture coordinate scale material function into this material graph, and we can simply uh, supply it with a vector2 value. So uh, we'll just set that to 1 and 1 for now, and you can see how easily that works. But we can also set this to like 10 and 10, and it will multiply our texture coordinate input very, very simply. Uh, to get the same result that we had before, divided by 10, it's the same as multiplying by 0 0.1. It's just basic math. And we have the same result that we had a moment ago. And as you could see there, uh, we can also very much just say, hey, we want to only stretch in one direction, just like you can with any other, like, stretching and squashing uh, with UV coordinates. So this is now all inside one node. What is very interesting, though, is if we have a, a parameter in here. So, for instance, we could parameterize uh, this if we wanted to. 
and run that through the Dexter coordinate scale. Just like convert this to a parameter and call this uh, param uh, UV scale. And now if we make a material instance on this, uh, we can just uh, scale this up however we want, right? We've gone over this before, so let's make a material instance of this real quick. And uh, we can see that we have the UV param scale. Uh, and that is, for some reason, taking in a vector for, uh, I don't exactly know why, but we've gone over this. Uh, that's because apparently when you make a parameter out of a vector 2, it just turns it into a vector 4. I'm not entirely sure why it would do that, but it does that. Uh, point being is that instead of doing that, what we could do instead, if you wanted to, is not have a input here. We can just remove the input altogether if we wanted to. And we could instead, for the most part, you probably wouldn't want to do this, uh, but this is a thing that you can do, is we can make this into a parameter instead. And then all of the materials that use this material function will have access to this parameter. Because the material function, at the end of the day, is kind of just a bunch of nodes crammed into one node. You could just as easily just put all of the nodes from any given function into a material graph, and that will be effectively the same. So that also counts for parameters. So if we count this as a UV scale param 2, it's important just like with any parameter, that they do have unique names. Uh, we can uh, break the four components. Again, we're going to just ignore the B and the A here. Uh, but now if we hook these up like this, uh, making sure that we have the proper ones connected up, uh, we do not. Uh, something like this, maybe. Things are being a little bit weird, uh, even though this has four values in it. It says that I have to use a float three components break node so sure let's do that i don't really care uh, and we can uh, hook this up to there this up to there we can just ignore the b and uh, now that we have that all set up uh, if we make sure that everything is properly applied and saved we will now see that we have the uv scale param 2 instead so We've got this UV scale param, which is actually not hooked into anything right now, so it's not being uh, taken into account. We can now directly influence the scaling uh, in the material function instead of doing it through the multiplication that we did before. Now, for the most part, uh, I think it is a little bit better form to not use too many parameters in material functions. If you have a reason to do so, please go ahead and do use them. Uh, but for the most part, I think uh, you want to mostly stick to function inputs instead, unless you know what you're doing and you have a really good reason to want to use a parameter. There isn't all that much to this uh, with the whole material function thing. Uh, aside from, of course, you can put material functions in material functions as long as it's not the function that you're uh, working in. So uh, what you probably shouldn't do, I don't even know if it will let you do that. Let's try this out. Text coordinate scale into text coordinate scale. I can't use that material function as it would cause a circular dependency. So yeah, uh, because that would then call this function within this function and that kind of just melts your CPU. So don't do that. Uh, you can't even do that. But if we had a separate one, so let's just uh, duplicate this and call this a text record scale one, we can very much just drag that into here and then we can have like multiple layers of functions that call other functions that call other functions as long as you don't make a loop of a function calling another function which that then calls that first function again but as you just saw unreal has built-in protections against that so if i now even if i go into a text record uh, one here i shouldn't be able to put in the text record scale uh, proper uh, actually i am that is interesting uh, potentially like when i save this it's going to, yeah, it's not going to allow me to do that because it says, hey, you're trying to call this other function, texture scale uh, one. It's not going to allow this because it says, hey, the function you're trying to call also has the function that you're working on right now inside of it. So that's going to create a loop and we're not about having those loops. So you can't even do that. It's a fun little tool to be aware of, to be able to use uh, going forward. In this series, we're not going to be using it too much because this is mostly to make more complex materials a little bit more readable, but we're not really 
building any very complex materials in this series we're just going over all of the individual aspects of the material graph so we've covered this now don't forget it and we'll be moving on and for the full course if you're watching this in the future it should be all up on the youtube channel already but if you're watching this shortly after it was uploaded there will be a link down below in the description to the patreon where you can find the full course and a very big thank you to all of my patrons you can see them on screen right now if you want to help out supporting the channel there's a link down below in the description to the patreon page and a special thanks to my cave digger tier patrons sergey thomas